Well, the last two videos have been a little on the long side. This one will be mercifully short. At the end of visual calculus, we had learned how to find the slope and the signed area underneath very simple straight line shapes. And we learned how to apply that into lots of situations. But in the real world, the graphs of position, velocity, and acceleration are almost never straight lines. They're almost invariably complex and curved lines. And so the real issue became, how can we approximate the slope and the signed area for more complex shapes? We started off with signed area, and we came up with four methods for approximating the area under the curve. Three of them were almost identical. Namely, we partitioned the curve into a set of rectangles, and the only difference was whether we used the left edge, the right edge, or the midpoint along the x-axis to represent the height. The fourth method was a little more sophisticated. We built trapezoids underneath the curve. After that, we asked ourselves whether we couldn't enlist the help of the calculator to find signed area under curves. And so building on what we knew about the rectangle method, we programmed our calculator to create a signed area finding machine. Just when we were uh, celebrating our success, however, we discovered that the folks at TI had beat us to it and built their own internal signed area finding machine, F-N-I-N-T. And I hope that you can reconstruct in teaching someone else how we built our signed area finding machine and then how to use the internal F-N-I-N-T function. Then we turned our attention to doing the same thing for a slope finding machine. This one is a little more subtle. And again, I hope that you can recount for yourself how we constructed our slope finding machine before finally turning to the built-in slope finding machine in Deriv. Now, unlike what we found with FNINT, where the TI built function was essentially in every way superior to our own signed area finding machine, that's not the case within Deriv. And I hope that you can give an example of a situation where our own slope finding machine is actually superior to in Deriv. Lastly, we went back to what we learned in visual calculus to see that we could do a variety of word problems, but not any longer just with simple lines, but with complex shapes.